Hello everyone, Coach Tim here, coming at you live from the uh, fitness dungeon. Happy Valentine's Day. We made it. We made it. And and to profess our love to you guys, uh, we got this chipper on board today. So, uh, so let's talk about it. Um, as usual, we have some, well, I wouldn't say as usual. This week, we have some uh, some accessory pieces to aid in our hand, our pursuit of handstand push-ups and the like, I'll say. So if you're curious, go ahead and look at the notes for that one, uh, as well as the attached videos. But let's, let's keep this video uh, focused on the wad, because what do we got? It wouldn't be wrong to think of this workout as kind of a culmination of the last few cycles, many, the last many, many weeks, probably something like eight to 12. Um, you know, it's all gonna, we're, we're, we're gonna use it all today, right? We have all of the, uh, the various gymnastics movements that we've spent a lot of time with, or, you know, recent time with as well. Um, and we're going to try to put it together in the form of a chipper. And this very much is a chipper. I don't know, you know, your definition of chipper, but for me, this is the kind of thing where uh, it's a four-time workout with what we can consider, and many of us can consider, high-volume reps of most of these movements, if not all. And that's, you know, that means y your your opinion of that can vary depending on how you are with those skills. Um, and... It's a chipper because you're going to chip away at those volumes. So let's go in order. Um, and we'll just say what they are first, and then I'll talk a little bit about them. Um, you've got 50 push-ups, 40 pull-ups, 30 ring dips, 20 ring rows, 10 handstand push-ups. So a couple things about the logistics of this. Like many of the other workouts we've done this cycle, or past few Wednesdays, including last cycle. The time cap today is 22 minutes. It's meant to persuade you to try the more complex version of some of these movements, like to give it a go, to chip away at it knowing you might only get some singles in there, but to feel like you have time to practice and try. Now, that being said, the volumes... The per round or you know per movement volumes are sort of all over the place in context. So starting with push-ups, 50 push-ups, that's a lot to do at one time. We haven't asked you to do that recently. Not to do that many at a time. Now that's the point of a chipper like this. This isn't the kind of workout where you're going to be laid out on the floor after it's over. Like maybe you were on Monday, you definitely were on Monday, maybe you were on Tuesday. You're going to, you know, you're going to be saving your breath on push-ups because you're probably only going to be able to get a couple at a time, right? I can tell you my set of 50 ended up being many sets of five. That's okay. We expect sets of two, sets of three, set singles. It's all good today, right? We don't want to be spending 10 minutes on the push-ups, but if we, you know, test our recovery ability and, you know, try to push the pace a little bit through the use of not ever going to failure, then you might find that you're okay. Pull-ups. Again, a lot to ask for one time. We've never asked you to do 40 in a row, not recently. Um, well, we did have, because some people did, uh, some people did Barbara back uh, several Saturdays ago. Um, but, you know, if you were not one of those people, then just know that 40 is a number we expect you to have to chip away at, no matter the, the modification you use. If you find yourself in a modification that allows you to do all 40 unbroken, then that is the wrong modification. I'm doing sets of 6 and 4, trying to chip away at sets of 10. That's how I felt about the pull-ups. And so you shouldn't think much differently, right? Give me the sets that you can, and eventually it will add up to 40. You have to be a deliberate, and you can't just walk away for minutes at a time, but see where you're at. And just know that if where you're at right now is singles or doubles, that's okay. That's expected. No one thinks you're going to do huge, huge sets and sustain that today. We don't. That's not the purpose of a workout like this. Now we get into 30, 20, 10, so volume's coming down a bit. But 30 is a lot of ring dips, is it not? Now, 
you know, we did more total ring dips last week during JT. So this should not be a, it should not be a daunting volume overall, but certainly you will not be able to do huge sets, right? So you're going to make sure, banded or otherwise, or even on a box, that you are challenging yourself, but also know, you know and be okay with small sets. One, two, three, things like that. Just again, don't walk away for long periods of time. Now we get to ring rows. Ring rows is interesting. We also had them on Sunday. Interesting because typically you think of these as um, uh, pull-ups modifications, right? But today everyone's going to do them. So what does that tell you? First of all, if you're used to doing ring rows as your modification for pull-ups, today we'd rather you do something different that gets you pulling vertically, right? We'd rather you use a band today. That would make a lot of sense. So when you get to the ring rows, it's a different movement. And for some people who are pretty good at pull-ups, it will be different to get on the ring rows. Now, we don't have to do anything to make them more challenging. You've already done so much at this point. So a set of 20 ring rows, you know, maybe there are some people who can do that unbroken, but I know that I couldn't. I was doing two sets of 10, and that was okay. You just have to make sure, and this is easy to see from the side, that your hips don't move. You know, that they don't kip. There is a way to kip ring rows, and we have to try to avoid that today. You can make it more difficult by being on your heels and trying to be as supine as possible. In other words, as chest towards the ceiling as possible. But ring rows are ring rows, and they can be difficult, especially at this stage of the wad. And then finally, we end it with 10 handstand push-ups. Now, the volume of handstand push-ups combined with how you feel at that moment of the wad is going to determine how you modify that. But just know, if you are someone who's very challenged by handstand push-ups, that 10, you know, it's a doable volume. But again, let feel dictate load, right? If you know by that point, ah, I'm probably going to do the pike variation today, or ah, I'm going to probably need two ab mats today, then do that. But just get through it, and you can. We're going to go with a 22-minute cap today. That is a couple minutes more aggressive than what we used for JT last week on purpose. We want to push the issue a little bit. We want to see if we can get through a little bit faster. When we say don't go to failure, we mean it, but that doesn't mean stand around or sit around for a long period of time. If you find yourself sitting around for minutes at a time or even a minute, then you've probably modified something incorrectly. All right, guys, enjoy this one. It took me about 11 minutes. All right.